welcome to The 100 Club. I'm delighted to say we have a special guest today. It is Southern Brave Seema, Lauren Bell. Lauren, welcome. Hi. So, I mean, it's been quite the start of the tournament for you. Um, for fans who wouldn't be familiar with you prior to The 100, what sort of, what's been your cricketing journey to, uh, to get to this point? Um, so I started off, I'm, I'm from Hungerford from, in Berkshire and I started off playing at primary school and um, like club cricket at Hungerford Cricket Club. Um, that's where I, mainly with, well, yeah, only with boys really. And then my older sister, um, she's three years older than me, she played a bit of cricket as well. And she went to the Berkshire County Girls set up when I think I was about nine and I kind of went along as well because my mum had to take us both and um then yeah I started playing for Berkshire then from yeah about since I was about nine or ten and then played all the age groups at Berkshire um girls and then I made my debut for the women at Berkshire when I was 14 and then I played for them for a few years um and then I was on the Vipers Academy the Southern Vipers which is where I play where I play like my cricket outside of the Braves really and I was there for two years and then I made my Vipers debut when I was 17 in 2018 um, in the KSL um, and yeah and then I've been a Southern Viper for the last few years and I signed my first professional contract in October which was very exciting and now obviously I've been playing for Southern Braves so yeah it's been quite a journey. You mentioned the the Vipers there, and I think the the women's hundred sort of the eight teams mirror the eight regional sites. And coming from the Vipers, you guys obviously won Rachel Hayhoe Flint Trophy last year. So did that give you kind of a lot of, a lot of confidence coming into the hundred, knowing that you were you were sort of the de facto champions? Um, I think it I, it gave me confidence as in I know that Charlotte Edwards is a great coach and. Like, the, like, I love being in Southampton. I love the Aegeus Bowl. Like, that feels like my home. But it's very separate. The team we have, like, the franchise cricket and the 100 cricket is very separate to what Southern Vipers is like. Like, it's a very different squad. Um, yeah, it, like, there are quite a few Southern Vipers girls, but it doesn't feel like the same sort of environment. Like, it's franchise cricket is very much about winning. Lottie just wants to win, basically, which is... <laughs> The best thing, um, whereas like some of the Vipers is very much more a bit of development. Like obviously we want to win, but it's a bit of development in there as well. So I'd say it's quite different. Um, but I was confident that I was going to enjoy it and we were going to have a really strong squad because obviously Lottie is a great coach. Yeah, that was going to touch on Charlotte Edwards or Lottie Edwards. There, I mean, a, a cricket legend, not not women's cricket, you know, cricket full stop legend. Uh, what, what's she like to work with? What's what's the kind of style of coach is she? Yeah, she's so great. I've worked with her for a couple of years now, and like she's a great person to have on side. That yeah, she just she's so great at managing all players. Like she treats everyone the way to get the best out of them, and she just she just gets teams to win really like with the Vipers had it like we had a lot of games last summer and again this summer where we've been in positions that we probably shouldn't have won and she just gets that winning formula out of teams she gets the best out of players um and the Southern Braves have had the exact same success um that again we've been in quite a few positions in this tournament where we probably shouldn't have won the game but um yeah we've We've just pulled through. She's got all the players to play at the best. So, she, yeah, she's great to work under. I mean, you mentioned that you, you've got five wins out of six. You're currently top of the table. Uh, it's all going pretty well at the minute. I was, I was yeah. interested. Sorry, carry on. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say it's been great. I mean, obviously we lost in Manchester, but in a way that was good because no, you don't want to be complacent. And that is why the 100 is so great that any team can beat any team. And you've got to be a best at every game, otherwise you're not going to win. So, yeah, it's good. Cool. I thought it was interesting you, you made that comment about how you really you love playing at the Aegeus Bowl. One thing I've noticed as a, as a fan is that even in sort of, you know, we're five or six games into the tournament, but there does feel to be like this home advantage, like the, the home fans are really getting behind teams. Was, did that surprise you? Yeah, I, I've i never played really in front of fans in any, like in any sense really like maybe the most I've played against is a thousand so like I've I'm you have home advantage and the way disadvantage with like staying in hotels and having to travel like I always knew that was 
a bit of a but like you kind of get used to it as a professional but yeah the, the fans have just been crazy like especially like the first game at Trent Bridge like I was just blown away with how many people were there and then at Lords there was I've been thinking about 15,000 people watching the women's game and you can definitely feel the pressure when you've got 15,000 people not wanting you to bowl their best player out um <laughs> Whereas at the Aegeus, like the fans are so great, and yesterday and and our first home game, we we the women stayed to watch the men's game, and then we walked as we were walking, we maybe left with about thirty balls to go to go back to the hotel, and we walked around the outside of the field, and all of the fans stood up and like cheered us off, and it was like, yeah, it was so it was crazy. I didn't. Yeah, think I saw it, that quite. Yeah, quite a few pe people picked that up on uh, on social yeah. media. It looked amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, great the way the fans are getting behind but behind both teams. I mean, we talk about the team doing so well, five wins out of six, and you're a huge part of that. So let me give you a question. What do Nat Silver, Jemima Rodriguez, and Hayley Matthews all have in common? Two things. What do they have in common? <laughs> oh, I got them out. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And the other thing is they're three of the four biggest, uh, highest run scorers in the tournament. The other is uh, Van really? Mieke, who you haven't come across yet. So no, not only are you getting wickets, you're getting, you're getting big wickets. So, <laughs> I mean, that must fill you with confidence, right? That you're, you're getting the star players out. Yeah, it does. I mean, I try my best to not bowl, like not think about who I'm bowling at and just thinking about how they play and like just doing my best. But yeah, it does feel great to know that like, I am helping the team out in the best way possible. And I'm like fully supported by my captain, Anya and Lottie. Like, I feel like it f fills me with confidence when they're filled with confidence in me. So yeah, I mean, it's been great, but I've tried to just stay really like grounded and really like just keep taking every game as it comes. But yeah, it's been a great start. I mean, Anya Shrubsoul is extremely experienced cricketer as well. And she played international cricket for the best part of a decade. You know, what, what are you learning from her in terms of this process and you know, watching her, how she goes about her cricket? Yeah, so she, like, she's been so great to have as a captain. She's very, like, her and Lottie work so well together because she's very chilled and very, like, um, like, this is the plan, we'll do this. And it's all really, really clear. So I think we have our meetings pre-game and we'll talk about, and she's really great because... I'll have like watched stats about the players, but I'll just come and Anya will be like, we'll have this field and we'll bowl this. And I, and she's like, you happy with that? And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I can do that. And so it's so great. And then <laughs> when we're in the middle, she's like, what do you want to do here? And if I give my field and she's like, yeah, yeah, I think that's great. It fills me with confidence. I'm like, yeah, this is the right plan. Um, like I know what to do. And obviously she does the same as me. So she can give me her tips and whatever of like how, what she'd do in that situation, which... Yeah, it's, it's priceless, really. And uh, the team's doing so well, you haven't even managed to have a bat yet. But uh, I, I know you enjoy batting. Are you, are you ready, when, if called upon, to, uh, to contribute some runs? Yeah, I, hopefully I won't need to be called upon, otherwise we would be in a bit of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm ready if they need me, but I'm, yeah, I'm happy to not get my pads out for the whole competition if that means that we're going to win every game. So... <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm very much there. Like, I have been working really, really hard on my batting throughout the winter. And, like, yeah, I, like, I'm like i there if they need me. But if my pads don't come out for the whole competition, we're doing really well. So <laughs> that's good. Just, just, just wanted to ask you a sort of a technical point in that a, a lot of people have been very impressed by the amount of in-swing you're getting with the white ball. I mean, traditionally, the white, white ball doesn't tend to move as much, but you seem to move it quite a bit. Have you always sort of naturally been able to swing a cricket ball or is that something you really worked on in the last last few years no I ever since I picked up a cricket ball it's just my natural action like I know they've spoken about it, I fall away quite a lot which is something I've worked on to actually stand up right sometimes I fall away and I actually swing the ball too much like it's I just kind of put it there and it just goes really early and swings too much so um yeah my natural action is that I bowl like hooping and swinging so I've actually been trying to stay stronger and get like a bit of like later swing rather than just it swinging from my hand but yeah it's just a natural thing I I don't like yeah it's not I've never learned to bowl in swing it's just how I picked up the ball and then I've tried to become more consistent throughout the last few years. <laughs> well uh, you you were part of the uh, the England bubble training last year like one of one of three uncapped players I think 
and you know you're still making your way in the game but i'm i'm making the assumption that you have you know international aspirations what what do you think you need to do to uh, sort of develop to get to that that next level to uh, to, to force your way into the england team um it's definitely like my goal is to play international cricket and i think the platform now for women's cricket is so amazing that like it's i think it's definitely realistic for not just me for any domestic player really like you have a good campaign and you don't know like what could happen but yeah I think the biggest thing for me and it's shown like I I think I've bowled well in the tournament but it's still just my consistency I think you watch players like Catherine Brunt and Anya and Nat Silver bowl and they're so consistent and they bowl their best ball nine times out of ten whereas I'm haven't quite got that consistency yet so that would probably be like the main thing I'm and I've been working on it for the last 18 months two years but it's still that that yeah I just need to get a bit more control of the swinging ball really well and with that ability to sort of move the ball as well presumably red ball cricket is would be part of the aspiration as well yeah I think obviously women don't play like a massive amount of red ball cricket and so like my aspiration would be still I mean, obviously, I'd want to play Red Bull cricket, but I think the first breakthrough would probably be with the white one, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, all formats of cricket would be, yeah, the <laughs> ideal, um, really. I can't. I don't think I have one necessary strength or weakness to my bowling. Um, I think I could fit into most um, formats. So, yeah, I think if I just keep working on my consistency, you, yeah, I never know how far I can go. But the domestic structure and the regional structure at the moment is so amazing that, yeah, we'll just have to see what happens so two games left in the group stages and then i think i think it's fairly i know you're not taking anything for granted but i think i think the southern brave will be involved in the eliminator stages um as as a young player who sort of made their name in this tournament a little bit what advice would you give to somebody sort of you know four or five years younger than yourself who's just sort of starting to you know make that leap from kind of youth cricket to you know you know professional cricket based on your experience, you know, what, what, what advice would you give? Um, I would just say enjoy it as much as you can. Like, I love playing cricket and I enjoy every game I play. And I think as soon as you start putting too much pressure on yourself, then, like, the enjoyment might come out and your performances might not be as good. So I think just enjoy it and just take every game as, like, yeah, just take every opportunity you get. I know, like, professional sport is very much, you'll get given an opportunity and you need to take it when you get given it. So I think as a youngster, like, as you get older, the opportunities change. And when I made my Berkshire debut, like, that was, like, the biggest thing ever. And then I played my Southern Vipers debut. And I think just every opportunity you get, just, like, take it and really, like, value it as, like, you don't really know what when the next one will come and all that. So, yeah, I'd say that. Just really enjoy it and take every opportunity you get really well Lauren we've been really enjoying watching your performances in 100 this year and good luck for the rest of the tournament and thank you so much for joining us thank you very much cool. cheers. cheers bye